There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day to worship you, Lord, and give you all the credit for each and everything that goes in our lives, Lord, that is good. And I pray that you, I pray that I can seek your face each and every day, Lord, and I pray that we can know where the blessings are coming from and Lord, I pray each and every day that we can grow, grow closer to you. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. This morning, I'm going to start out with uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to start in uh, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absence, we may be, we, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done whether it be good or bad. Verse 12, For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory in our behalf. And you, have, you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. For the love of Christ constrained us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Now, the Bible speaks of life after death. The Bible speaks of what we're going to go through from now on, in other words. Whether living or dying and alive in Christ. It speaks of each and everything that we're going to go through. But I want to set our minds and set our sights on one specific thing this morning. What's going to happen and how it's going to be so great when we see Jesus face to face. I mean, it talks about the judgment day of Christ. It talks about the Bible does. It talks about what well, the hereafter. It talks about everything that's good, bad, evil. It don't matter what it is, what it pertains to. It talks about Him, the living, almighty God, and how He's going to do specific things that I'm not going to get into this morning. Again, I want to specify what we're going to do and how we're going to react when we see Jesus face to face. Are we going to be the same as we are today? Are we going to arise and we're going to be uh, just amazed? I want to tell you what this morning. It's, it, we, sometimes I feel that even myself, take it as a grain of salt, that when he steps out of the cloud, it's going to be so good, it's going to be so great. People, we, we can't even imagine what it's going to be like. John, the revelator, touched on it just, just, just the outer lines of it, of how it's going to be when he steps on that, on that cloud and takes us to heaven and what we're going to see and what we're going to, oh God. In other words, we're going to see, no, by God's word. We're going to see by sight, not by faith anymore. Because we're going to have faith by our sight. Can you imagine seeing Jesus Christ face to face and Him looking at you and you looking at Him and you thinking, my God, all this time I wonder what He looked like. 
I've seen portraits of him, and I've seen all kinds of stuff, but I, I don't even really know what he looks like. I know his voice. I know what he speaks, but I don't know what he looks like. And I can put that voice with that face. It's going to be so great till I can't even fathom it. But let's go over here in Revelation real quick. And it says, chapter 22, verse 3 says, And there will be no more curse. Wow. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall worship him or serve him. And they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead. We're talking about a place when we see him, we're going to be immediately changed in the likeness of him. We're going to be immediately changed where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more fevers, no more nothing in this life that we're about to receive. Can you imagine? I don't know about you, but I've had a pain here and there ever since I was born. I've had a headache, I've had a backache, I had something wrong with me even when I was young. No more pain. Every pain will subside. We'll have a brand new body, a brand new life, a brand new everything. And we won't walk around hurting anymore. The old fevers, the plagues, Everything that this old devil can conjure up will be gone because there's no evil in heaven. And one day we're going to see that. And one day we're going to know that Jesus Christ is in charge and he is going to reign. And he's going to take care of business. But I don't know about you. All that is great. All that is fantastic. But what comes into my mind is I'm going to see him face to face. I'm going to look at Jesus. Just look at him. I don't know about you, but it makes brings a tear to my eye, knowing that I am going to see the ultimate Savior, someone that I believe and know with all my heart. But I'm going to see him. Just, just take that a minute and just think about it. See him face to face. Words cannot explain that. We only have images in our mind of pictures on the wall and pictures of things that, that we'll see him face to face. I don't know about you. There's going to be loved ones there. There's going to be all people that we knew in our past. It's going to be our, our we ain't got to go to Ancestor.com no more because they're going to be right there in front of us. And the Bible says we, we will know them by a sense of smell. Can you remember, I can, what my mama smelled like, what my daddy smelled like, with all the people before me. When I'd give them a hug and I smelled them, and I knew them by their smell, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to look at them. When they hugged my neck, I knew who I was hugging is what I'm saying here today. And it's going to be that way in heaven, the Bible says. We would know them by the sense of smell. I read that this morning. It just blew my mind. How can we know? How can we know? You remember when, when the disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus, and Jesus Christ was walking with them, and they they really didn't know him. Well, they didn't know him. But there for a little bit, they got to know him again, right? And the Bible says we will know a person, we will know a person that we knew before even more than we knew them on this earth. But it's all going to be good. 
That's what blows my mind. Is it's all going to be good. We're going to see Jesus face to face, and everybody will come in contact. It's going to be good. No evil thoughts, no evil, nothing evil. And we'll have any, nothing to set us back because there will be no pain. We'll have no, nothing to set us back because there will be no evil, and we won't have no evil thoughts of anyone. We come in contact with it. Nothing we say will hurt their feelings. Nothing they say will hurt ours. We're going to be free. Because the Bible says in Him we are free. And it'll be no more curse. You know, in the Old Testament, when Jesus Christ came and the veil was ripped and tore down, it was gone completely. And there'll be no more, there was no more veil then because He made, he made us free, right? In Christ. We, he made us free in Christ. But when we get to heaven, we will be free in ourselves. That makes sense? The flesh will be gone, so we will be free. The veil will be torn once again. Amen? That is just, I can't stress on it enough, knowing that I'm going to be completely, completely free. Amen. That's going to be a good day. Now Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 25, starting verse 7. Even back in the Old Testament, Isaiah was preaching this here. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the rebuke of, rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth, and the Lord has spoken it. And it shall, shall be said in that day, Lo, this is, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, and will be glad and rejoice in salvation. Amen. When Jesus Christ hung upon that cross and he died for you and I, the veil was ripped. And we were free in him. We were free in the spirit. We were free. But we were still in bondage in the flesh. But in him we were free. But I'm telling you this morning, when you get to heaven, when I get to heaven, we're going to be completely Free. I'm talking about the flesh is going to be gone, in other words. And we will be free of sin and death. We will be free of sickness. We will be free of everything that comes in contact with us. Immorality. Everything. We'll have it behind us. It'll, it'll, it'll be at our feet from then on. No more worries. No more complaining. No more heartache. Because everything that comes out of this mouth is going to glorify God and it is going to praise His holy name. So where there be no sickness, no more evil, no more nothing, no more. Because we in Him. Now I've asked myself many times, how come I can't do it now? I've got the power of Jesus Christ all over me. I've got Him ruling my life when I abide in Him. Why can't I go do it now? Why can't I just look at him? Because I give in to the devil and he's to and fro all over this world and I give in to him at times. But he's not going to be there in heaven. He's not going to be there tormenting us each and every day. He's not going to be there. Only we and the Lord will be there. Amen. And our loved ones. Oh Lord, I, I just can't get over that too. I hear people talking about their mammas and their grandmas and their uncle, uncles and nephews and all the kin folks that, that was before them. I got a picture of my grandparents on the wall in there and I look at them every morning thinking, one day I'm going to see them face to face. One day I'm going to know them by their smell. One day I'm going to see them face to face. I don't know about you growing up, though. 
the biggest thing in, in, in our family was eating at the dining table, breaking the bread, sharing the peas, in other words, rejoicing. The Bible says we're going to be at the dining table with our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be a great homecoming. You know, the Bible speaks of one day, each and every time someone enters the gates of heaven, the angels and the people there rejoice. It's going to be a great homecoming. We all going to gather around the throne, worship and praise His holy name with our kinfolks, with our loved ones and our friends, and just everyone is going to be around us. And we never have to worry about anyone getting sick anymore. Or anyone dying. And the biggest thing is anyone leaving us. Because they'll all be there in love. We'll never have to pray for healing anymore. Because all will be healed. We never have to ask anymore. Because it'll all be given to you. Amen. Everything is going to be in heaven one day. But I'm telling you, I'm telling myself this morning, I can have it all right now. I can, I can be righteous in Him. I can have all the riches in Him. And I'm talking about Jesus Christ. And I can have the healing in Him. But I have to give up all the doubts. And I have to focus directly on Him. Because He said, for the mountain to be moved, I have to wholeheartedly trust. Right? Or is it faithful mustard seed? The bigger the mountain, does it take bigger the faith? Or more of the faith? And then when he don't do it, do I ask why? Lord, I prayed all night. Wake up the next morning and it's still the same. And the old doubtful word of why comes out of my mouth. When I should be praising God. Because whether we live or whether we die, in Him we're going to be took care of. In Him. So we just have to listen to His voice and follow His command and believe in Him. And know that He's got it. Well, the Bible speaks of the word of doubt. What comes out of my mouth a lot. Lord knows I try to stop it. So I need to start quit saying why. And start saying okay. Anything you give me Lord, I'll take it. Because I know it's always going to be good. But I do know, without a shadow of a doubt, that he still wants us to pray. Either for a good outcome, a bad outcome, whatever it takes, whatever it is, we still need to believe, we still need to say, I'm okay with it, but I'm still going to pray for what I want. And then let the Lord uh, uh, sort it out for what I need. That's what I need to do each and every day. God, Lord knows I don't really know what just I need. Because then won't start flooding in and I start saying, Well, I just want a little bit more. And then each and every time he tells me, Harvin, I don't give you what you need. Leave it alone. 
But let's get back to this one more time. And I won't think long and hard on this today. Because he has laid it on my heart hard and heavy this morning. Face to face. There will be no more need for light. No more for the sun to shine. No more for nothing. Because he's going to be all the light we'll ever need. Can you imagine lighting up this whole world by Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? God is going to say, let there be light. Jesus Christ is going to step out on that cloud. Amen. Jesus Christ is going to step out and say, Y'all come on, let's go. It's ready. It's time. You hear the horn blowing? Come on, let's go. And how fast is it going to happen? About that fast. Right there, I couldn't even, so I may not even be able to complete this sermon I'm preaching right now. He may just snap his fingers and go. Pain free. Completely free. No more dying. No more heartache. No more nothing. Just snap a finger. There it is. It's gone. We're there. We're in heavenly places. We walk in the streets of gold. We're coming up to the gates. There's mom and daddy opening them up. Oh, Harvest. We're glad to see you again. that embrace and squeeze them so tight and they won't they won't make a sound because they, they, they're pain free <laughs> and we all will be joyful complete joyful complete freedom no more worries, no more pain, no more dying. Lord, I just, I can't get that out of my mind. How it's going to be so great. And we take it sometimes so lightly. Why else, why in the world do we believe in anything else when we have all we need right here in that book, in that heaven? All we need. Why do we even focus on anything else? To get us through this life. Just look to him. Let him lead, guide, and direct you. That's all we have to do. And honor his holy name. And, we, and the Bible says we're going to sing like angels. Can you imagine making a joyful noise and we won't only make a joyful noise unto the Lord but we will be putting out something that is oh God I just can't explain it anymore so I'm going to leave it right there and if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life you don't have a relationship with him if you don't know him as your personal savior I pray you do. I pray you do. And I pray that I can draw closer to it. And I pray that one day I will see you and all in heaven. And it won't be no more. I don't want to be around that person because of what they're doing will be saying praise his holy name can you imagine that's all we're going to do is walk around each and every day and, and praise and worship God and I will, but let's stop and back up just a minute we have that same option right now we don't have to wait till we get to heaven we got that same option right now. Praise and worship Him all the time. No matter what comes in our life, comes in the, that knocks down our walls. 
Lord, have mercy. Let him not do the knocking. Let him do everything in our lives to make the things happen that he wants to happen, not what I want to happen. Not try to change his mind, but let him change ours into something that is in freedom. And we know whatever the outcome is, he is still in control. And he either made it happen or step back, sit back and let it happen. So let's just wake up this morning and treat him as we have seen him face to face. And believing by sight and knowing that he is real. Thank y'all for coming and glorious day in the Lord. Amen.